Well, hi again, everybody, and welcome to this week's edition of Inside Furman Athletics. I am Dan Scott, the voice of the Paladins. Very, very happy to have you with us. Hope you're enjoying these interviews that we do on a weekly basis throughout the course of the academic and athletic year. We try to take you into uh, every department that we can so you can get a, a better idea of what goes on behind the scenes here inside the Furman University Athletic Department. And today we're going to take that look behind the curtain, if you will, at the uh, strength and conditioning aspect of Furman Athletics. And that's with uh, Andre Bernardi, who is the uh, strength and conditioning coach here. Um, your title's so long, I couldn't fit it all on the screen. So you're just you're just strength coach, yeah, uh, according to the screen that's here. That's perfect. How are you, man? Everything's good. Everything's good. Just grinding away this time of year. I, I, I got to start off by asking you, and I can't remember if it was the the fall of 2019 or the spring of of 21 football season, but that video that that populated and got a lot of airplay when we broke a long touchdown run and somebody clipped it and zeroed in on this guy on the sidelines who is sprinting down Absolutely. the sideline almost in lockstep with whoever the ball carrier was on that touchdown. That was you. Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, you move pretty good for an old guy. <laughs> I feel like the acceleration's still there, but I don't think I – he kind of took off as I fell behind. But, you know, in the end, I'm always going to celebrate my guys. I want to – I tell them, like, you know, hey, things are difficult. We make it hard. We do that all year round. So when, you know, we get the opportunity to celebrate and be excited for – uh your performance and you scoring a touchdown, I'm going to be the first one to greet you, but I'm also going to be the first one to hold you accountable. That's the big thing. So, um, you know, the guys kind of know that. So, but bottom line is you, you still got a quick first step. Is, is, <laughs> yeah. that, is that what I'm hearing? You know, I, I think I could accelerate pretty well, <laughs> I, I, you know, for for an older guy now. So, <laughs> now, again, we have to couch in, in the proper terms what older guy <laughs> is compared to some people in this room and there ain't but two of us so let's <laughs> let's kind of keep that in perspective here how are things going uh on on your end of the athletic department you know really well um we were blessed to have that new weight room which is right at two years old in december so you know blessed to have some of the best equipment our coaches our uh, administrators have bought into our department um, they believe in what we're doing and you know that's an important thing just having a belief in us um, on that end and uh, us being the professionals and you know the areas of conditioning the areas of strength uh, the areas of speed development um, but things are going well um, you know some days are for us right now, some days are really, really busy, and then some days are a little slower and heavy in the morning, heavy in the afternoons. But we're just glad to have our athletes back and in action. And, uh, you know, so far, so good. Well, we're going to talk about all the, the, the latest trends and technology and, and everything else that's going on in, in your business. But I want to go back a little bit for people who don't know something about this guy's bio. He was, first of all, a phenomenal football player at North Greenville University. I was doing some some research. School record, 42 sacks during your time there. A Division II record, 78 tackles for loss. Three-time D2 All-American. Yes, that's, that's, that's pretty strong. Yes, sir. <laughs> you know, uh, I, here's the thing. What got me into strength and conditioning is my work ethic. So um, a lot of that carried from player to coach. Mm -hmm. Um, and, you know, I tell all my staff, like, hey, we need to coach to the best of our ability every day. And, you know, I like to think I have a motor as a coach. That's just kind of part of who I am and kind of my expectation for me. Um, and I know what having a motor does. You know, it carried over from what I did on the field and, it, you know, had some good people around me as well. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's about hard work. And, you know, I got into this business because – it's about hard work. Uh, and then, you know, uh, trying to carry that over as a coach and get the best out of every athlete. That's my goal is just get the best, make them better movers every single day, just having the mindset of winning every rep. And, um, you know, I took a lot of that mindset. Also had some good coaches uh, that coached me up and uh, gave me opportunities as a player as well as a coach 
that kind of made me who I am and where I am today. So thankful, thankful for that. Why then, after your playing days are over, why the strength and conditioning avenue as opposed to going into coaching? Well, you know, it's kind of odd uh, how it got started and, and Coach Staggs. Uh, I, you know, I got done playing and, you know, I was kind of one of those guys that maybe get an opportunity, maybe sneak in a camp, was doing workouts for a couple NFL teams, you know, and it just kind of, I kind of fell through the cracks. Like, you know, a lot of guys do, um, don't know why. Um, so I'm not going to make excuses, but never made it to that level. Um, but, you know, a couple weeks later, Coach Staggs called me up, who was the defensive coordinator mm -hmm. for a couple years here, uh, now at Coastal. And, you know, he, he's like, hey, you're going you're gonna to be coaching Spurs. And he's like, well, first off, Coach Chow will call me and ask if I'd be interested in GA. And I was like, yeah, absolutely. Wanna. I knew I wanted to be around football. Got on campus and he, he sat down with Coach Staggs and he's like, hey, you're going to be coaching Spurs, which is like the field outside linebacker. He's like, but um, the thing is, uh, your scholarship comes from women's basketball, so you're going to be training the women's basketball team. So that's kind of how it took off. Um, kind of how I figured out that's what I wanted to do was more of I just, you know, I'm an antsy guy. It's it's like I always want to be doing something, as you know. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I really appreciated the watching film, the schematic side of football, and I knew that was an important as a player, but – kind of my passion grew more into the development of an athlete um and really it took off like that other teams saw what I was doing and at the time I was saving for coach Kate's ring and a couple of teams started paying me out of their club account finding ways to and then the athletic director finally was like hey we're making you know we're making a position and you know multiple people helped out with that coach Chadwell Mike Asepko assistant AD yep. the AD uh you know a bunch of great people at North Greenville gave me the opportunity which probably at the time I wasn't ready for, but um, we figured it out, got a little better at each year, and uh, now we're where we're at. So yeah, you were the first full time strength and conditioning yes, coach sir. ever at yes, North Greenville, right? Yes, sir. Um, so you know, when I was an athlete, uh, Coach McGee or our offensive line coach ran it, but we didn't have just a strength and conditioning professional. Um, so you know, I was blessed. It's very rare in our in our world to be a director and I've only been a director. So been blessed in that area. And, you know, also finding ways to learn and get better from other coaches was important just because I wasn't under somebody for a period of time. But um, yeah, it's a unique path and definitely blessed and thankful for it. Yeah. I mean, that kind of segues into something I hope is going to be a little bit humorous because you say you've only been a director and you mentioned your wife, Caitlin, who is on your staff and, and you are the strength and the conditioning coach and her title is assistant strength and conditioning coach, which means that at least here at Furman, you're her boss, but how does that translate when you get home? Oh, so, you know, we, we actually through at, we've gotten better every year so just like <laughs> having that balance that uh -huh. work life balance has been really important for us and you know in the end it's teamwork it's teamwork as her as a strength coach and then it's teamwork as me being a husband yeah. at the house so uh we all know how important that is so yeah, i think it's like any anyone else i here we kind of you know people are like oh y'all work to well when I'm on the field, she's got a team. And then when I'm in the weight room, she's so like, yeah, we see each other. We collaborate. We end up talking shop. But a lot of times, you know, we're not around each other as much as people really think we are. But, um, you know, we're blessed to very unique situation and blessed to have her and, a, uh, you know, Coach Aldred and Coach Novotoski. And we've we've got some fellows on staff now. So. You know, one thing I'm pleased is just seeing our department grow from a staff uh, staff point of view. Um, so along with, you know, Stephen Antley's helping out a lot with football, which is a fellow, and Lauren Farber, who played lacrosse here, is, mm -hmm. you know, we've been able to keep her around. So we want to keep good kids around that want to be coaches. And um, But, yeah, we're, we're rolling. Hey, you mentioned Coach Aldred. Matt Aldred is actually going to be the guest on this week's uh, All Den basketball podcast that I'll be recording later today uh, so we'll get a chance for basketball fans to catch up with him so do you have to at home have you had to make a, an effort that says okay we're not going to talk about I mean we're, we're going to be just for our own sanity 
yeah. and for our relationship have to put Furman out of your minds at times when you get yeah. home and create that this is us space. Yes, sir. I think that work-life balance is, is essential, but, you know, we both love what we do. So a lot mm-hmm. of times it may be collaboration questions, talking about strength and conditioning or talking about your, your day as a normal husband and wife do. Mm-hmm. Um, but I also think, like, it's a good time to, you know, we got a little boy on the way, so we're planning that and, and working through all that. So, um, you know, life's going to change a little bit and be a little adjustment and no better way to do it than do it together there and figure go. it out together. So, See, you, you, you said all the right things. I was <laughs> worried I was going to have to give Caitlin, you know, 10 minutes for rebuttal uh, after no. this, but you, you said all the right things. Hey, n- nine years is enough to know <laughs> that I figured it out. So, um, no, yeah. but, and, and, and until you throw a little one in, right. in, into the Absolutely. mix and then the learning curve starts all, all over again. Yeah. Andre Bernardi uh, is with the strength and conditioning coach here. Uh, at Furman University. You mentioned the motor, and you're always having to do something. I told Clay yesterday we were doing this, and I joked, I said, Andre's one of those guys that makes coffee nervous because, <laughs> because you're, just, you're, you're constantly in motion, constantly doing something. Have you always been that way? Um, I'm always looking for ways to get better. I'm always, ways, uh, I'm always looking for opportunities to be a light for other people. I'm always looking for opportunities to be positive. I'm looking for opportunities to serve others. Mm-hmm. I think that's why I got put on this earth, and God's put a lot of us on that on this earth to serve. And and you know, if I'm going to serve somebody, I want to serve them to the best of my ability, and that's part of me bringing energy daily. And you know, and I I tell everybody, I was like, hey, you know, one thing you can control every, you know, two things: energy and effort. I tell our guys that all the time. You can control your energy and effort. If I come in there without energy, there's there's something wrong because the my you know my athletes will, I would hope and my coaches would say, Coach, you you okay? So, um, you know, it's part of me being locked in and just who I am. Now, my old guys that have been around me five years, if I don't bring energy, there's going to be a concern on their end. So, um, consistency, you know, uh, comes with that, and you know, it is day to day, and there is days where you're a little more tired, but. Um, again, we're here to serve. We're here to make athletes better, and it's my job to bring that energy that they expect from me every day. Um, so, and, and and I think I'm I'm assuming this is the same way for you. Maybe you're one of those freaks that, that just have that energy all the time. But there are days that that most of us who who have to project, like when I come to do a, a, a broadcast, I think people will say I have a lot of energy on the broadcast. There are some days because of external factors or whatever, that when I walk into this booth, doing that at that moment may be the last thing that I want to do, mm-hmm. but I've got to find a way to get that out of my head and go about the job. Do you have those days where I don't really want to project energy, I don't really feel it right now, but you have to reach down deep inside and, and do it anyway? I don't think, I'm a, I, don't think I have days where I, I, I will say, we tell our athletes to hang their coat at the door. Right. Meaning, you know, uh, Dan, you got stuff going on. Uh, Athletes got stuff going on. But you also have a family here you're working with. So, Mm. um, you know, um, and and I've been there before. We've had, you know, a loss of a family member or things like that. Some days there is other things, and, and it's important to also care and understand what the athlete's going through. I think that's huge, but... Um, I don't think it's fair to my athletes not to bring any energy every day. You know, we get time off like right now, you know, the weight room's not as busy as it normally is and mm-hmm. football's not training every day. So it does give me an opportunity to, you know, get some other work done where I actually sit down and, you know, do the computer thing, which, uh, you know, people, people don't see that much, but, you know, just certain things, budgetary and stuff like that, that's important for a director to do. But my love, my passion is out there coaching and celebrating our athletes, um, you know, maybe doing things that they haven't done before. We're going to celebrate it. We're going to get excited about it. Um, but, you know, love my job. I can't, uh, you know, say it enough. And, and you know, I, I'm in a very unique situation here to be working with my wife and have a great staff. Um, so, uh, no, we can't have that day-to-day mentality. It's just not – it doesn't exist in our world, I don't think. I mean um, – well, what, What's interesting about it is that, that everything you're saying, uh, I have been able to independently cooperate with your players because 
Uh, we we do these press conferences with with Clay Hendricks on Mondays, and every every week there are, are two players, and invariably. One of them independently it doesn't have anything to do specifically with the training or conditioning, but invariably one of them is going to bring up something that gives you and your staff credit for what, they, what they've done. And I, I asked uh, Cam Brinson in yesterday's press conference about the fact that five games into the season and this defense is not allowed a point yet in the fourth quarter, and is that becoming a point of pride? And he said yes, and the thing that he defaulted to immediately was Coach Bernardi says that the fourth quarter is our money time. That's where yeah. that's where we quote unquote make our money. Yeah. And so so the, these guys, and and I'm sure the the young ladies that are are, are getting the the benefit of the same training through you and your staff, it is making an impact. Mm-hmm. And 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 Thank we you. see it, we hear it. And we don't even have to bring it up. It, it It's like a default mode for a lot of them. <laughs> well, thank you. Well, I think in, in that area, um, I believe in my athletes. They believe in me. It works both ways. I trust them. They trust me. How, how long did it take to develop that trust, though? Um, I think that that's the, that's the key to this whole thing. You know, I think, I think when I first got here, I, I think it was hard for a lot of our athletes. It was different. My demand was a little bit different. How I went about things was a little bit different. So there was an adjustment on their end. But when it comes to the culture piece, you know, it starts from the top, right? And it works its way down, but it comes to life from the ground up. So, like, you know, getting leaders to believe in what we did was the big thing. And I always, you know, I have a system that I believe in. Our athletes believe in it, right? I think – there's a portion where you sell it to them every day. It works. Mm-hmm. It's fun. But then there's that demand side where it's saying, hey, this is my expectation for you. I'm going to bring the same expectation back. So those things when building a culture and building a foundation are all extremely important because it, it's about loving and caring about your athletes. But with love and care, it's tough love too. There's accountability. There's a standard. And you know, I preach that standard to them all the time. You know what I mean? Sunday, we're coming off a loss, and it was our job to come back in there and go back to work. Nobody cares about the last game. It was it. The only way to get better and improve is focus on detail and go to work. So um, I think when you're coming to a place, there's always a process because you got to get the people around you that believe in you. I mean, from a coach, and we've got a good group of coaches and Um, You know, Coach Novotoski, I've been around him for years, obviously married to Caitlin. Coach Aldridge has now been here four years. Um, We have two fellows that believe. So it's like a group of coaches that believe in what we're doing. But then on the other end, it's a group of athletes that trust and believe in us. And it works both ways. And, you know, we got to we got to show them that we care daily. We got to show them that detail is important. We got to show them that winning every rep of every single set is important. We got to learn to push ourselves. And there's a bunch that goes into it. Mm -hmm. But um, I think having a solid foundation, believing in your culture, believing in what you do, and then the athletes see that. And I think it works both ways. And you know what? Like Cam Brinson and those dudes that have been around me four years, those dudes work their butt off. And then my guys, you know, speaking football is is obviously the team – that I work most with, they work every day and they trust what, it doesn't matter what I throw at them, they're going to do it. And a lot of our other athletes are the same when Coach Kate works with women's basketball or Coach Nova works with tennis. Those athletes believe, but with that believe is that standard. And we always say elite is a standard. Are you going to bring it every day? Are you going to be consistent? Are you going to let school being difficult affect your training? Because that's the unique thing about Furman. School is hard. You signed up for it, though. So at the same time, it's like, hey, we get it. We know it's hard. Let's go to work. That's the only thing we can do. Work wins in the end. Um, and I think all our athletes know it. And, hey, you know, a lot of tough training sessions progress as an athlete. Um, so those guys that have, you know, three, four years, Matt Chachoka, he's been around me a long time. Cujo, they've been around me a long time. Like, I could give them the sheet and I could have to, wouldn't have to say anything, but they know the standard. Um, and, you know, during those COVID times when, uh, you know, we, you know, the, it hit the strength staff and we only had one strength staff member 
still on. And, and a couple of my guys stood up and said, hey, y'all know what the standard is. We got to go to work. So, um, you know, I believe in my guys. They believe in me. Um, but I'm going to hold them to a standard, and, and they know that. But like you said, hey, I'm going to celebrate. I'm going to be the first yeah. one to celebrate touchdowns with them and victories and um, success. Uh, that's important, too. How, how, do you, how do you balance or how do you gauge ultimate success? Because it, there, there's no question it's a results-driven profession. Absolutely. And, and there's, a, there's an old saying uh, that, that the late Jim Bouton wrote in his book, Ball Four, that, that I'll, I'll, I always default to in certain situations. He said the world doesn't want to hear about the labor pains. It only wants to see the baby. Right. And, and so the, the, the Furman world sees a loss to Sanford on, yes, on Saturday. But that's not the true measure of success in what you're trying to do as a strength coach, right? Right. Well, one thing, you know, talking about the loss, and I know Coach said we were turning the page, but one thing is I know based off of how my guys work daily and how they um, come every single day in the weight room, I know that when there's something that doesn't go wrong, they usually do a good job of, and that's what we train for. We want adversity in our training, so when, you know, it comes and it gets difficult, you know, and in the end, we didn't get it done this past week, but it's also an opportunity mm-hmm. to grow, um, and, and we got to use it. And, you know, you only get so many opportunities. For us, it's, you know, you know 10, 11, 12 games, maybe 15 is the goal, um, but we got to take advantage of those opportunities every single time. So, um, you know, I, I, I think, you know, it's going to be measured like that. And, you know, I remember years ago, um, there was articles about Coach Batson in, at Clemson before Dabo got there and saying this and saying that. Um, but you know what? I'm in a world where, like, people are going to judge coaches. They're going to judge coaching. They're going to judge strength and conditioning. A lot of times, heck, the f- f- strength coach gets the finger pointed at them a lot of times. But you know what? I'm going to embrace that. You know what I mean? And, and you know, that's something that's okay. You don't get in this business to – um, you get, we get in this business to serve. We get in this business mm-hmm. to make athletes better. Um, you know, we don't get into that other stuff. And, and, you know, a lot of people do, a lot of people would, you know, in our world will probably judge how I am on the sidelines and that's okay. I know what gets my guys up and I know what they believe in. I know what they expect from me. Um, so I don't think you should ever be an outsider looking in judging a program in, in any spot. Cause you're not there day to day. And your players also would know. If, if that was an act as opposed to being genuine, and they know yes, that, that that enthusiasm is a genuine enthusiasm. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Well, and hey, you come in there, we're going to have the same energy. You know what I mean? Like, I, I tell my coaches, I want you to coach, and I want you to be fundamentally sound in your coaching, but I want you to bring energy. And, you know, after a loss on a Sunday, it's, it's hard for the mm-hmm. guys to come in after a physical game, but you know what? Nobody cares. We, we, we got to go to work, yep. and that's, that's, that's in the end. Uh, what you got to do and our guys have done really good job on Sundays doing that Um, but uh, no we're always gonna embrace opportunities to get better I I, I gotta before we start heading down the the road towards wrapping up here I I gotta mention you mentioned Joey Batson over at Clemson and and I covered Clemson first as a a newspaper guy and and then as a broadcaster from 99 until I took this job Mm -hmm. in in 2011. And and Joey Batson's just, he's an an incredible human being. Great human being. And and is one of the top guys in his profession. Yes, sir. And and, and Furman fans, I'm sorry, but fan is short for fanatic. And and when things aren't going well, fans start looking for somebody to blame. And, you know, they go from head coach to – coordinators to this and, and, and ended up there for a stretch, it, you know, is the problem our strength and conditioning coach. And this guy is one of the best in the probably the history of the business. So even that is not, is, is not unique to, um, to the fan experience, I guess. They're always looking for somebody to blame when something Sir. doesn't go right. And, and um, I, I guess you know that when you sign up for the job, right? Absolutely. And, pl- and players know that when they sign up. Absolutely. I think it's I think it's part of it. You're gonna people are gonna, you know, judge you based off results. You know, first off, Coach Batson's a great guy. When I was at North Greenville, even he always made time to answer mm-hmm. a text or answer a call 
great guy, and, and, and I've had the opportunity to follow a lot of good strength coaches that have come through that have come through Furman. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it is result. Like, we like winning. I want to win every game, um, and, and you should. Um, but, again, when, when things don't go your way, how are you going to bounce back? How are you going to grow? Like Coach says, we got a good football team. Yes, we You know, do. we're just a couple of details and execution away from that. Um, you know, and we'll be back on the challenge this week in Charleston. So. I, and, and just to, as, as an aside before we move on, I don't know that there's anything more frightening than that fourth quarter hype video they show on that now mile high new video screen over at Clemson with Joey Batson <laughs> screaming at people yeah. <laughs> on, yeah. on that huge board over there. Yeah. If that doesn't get you moving, nothing does. We're visiting with uh, Andre Bernardi, the, the, uh, the fine strength and conditioning coach here at Furman. How is technology changing in your business? How is nutrition changing in your business? You know, not just from the time you were a player, but from the time you got into the coaching aspect of this. Right. So, um, you know, kind of coming from a small school background, that's probably the, the thing we're probably, I'm probably most behind on. And that's an area that we've kind of implemented velocity-based training without having the velocity side of it or the technology side of it. So probably one of the things, and and I'm sure Coach Aldridge will work on it because we're trying to collaborate with our exercise science department. Basketballs are using force plates, some of the golfs. Um, both basketballs are using GPS. So I would say, and, and one of the things that, you know, I've already kind of brought up to coaches, you know, trying to implement GPS in some way uh, starting in the off season so we could start tracking some data, but it's grown a bunch. It's, you know, a way to keep guys healthy. It's a way to, um, you know, evaluate the amount of volume that each athlete is, uh, is performing in practice. Um, and I, I think as we, technology is a big piece, you know, a lot of the big schools have a sports science specialist. So, you know, it's one of those things where the strength coach, you know, goes to them and be like, hey, what's the data say today? Or the head coach will say, what do we need to cut back on? Um, and again, Coach Aldridge will be able to tell you some more things about that. Um, but it's growing a bunch, you know, from the nutrition side, it's one of those things like, you know, if you're not maximizing the nutrition side, you're behind. So, you know, I think our department has done a good job and getting support from Jason and Coach Hendricks and Bob and those guys in that nutrition area. So, you know, one of those things is we always have something for the athletes to have post-workout. And part of it's each team buying in, you know, and, and uh, from that nutrition side, uh, you know, you can't you can't out-train a bad diet. And, and, you know, I think our athletes know we're a little more individual-based based off of, needs of the athlete in certain situations for me I've got a larger group so in a larger group it's more like hey coach can I have help or coach Hendricks come to me and say hey you know we need to try to put some weight on them you know I've got you know and I'm speaking of football I've done a really good job of keeping their body weights at or above where they're supposed to be right now um, so that's a big uh, reason uh, they're taking advantage of the fuel stations, you know, in, in football, we have one downstairs and then post-workout, all our athletes have access to a bar at least or chocolate milk. And um, obviously it's huge. You know, I think at our level, our athletes need to utilize their time and take advantage of opportunities away from us too mm -hmm. in that area. Because, you know, if you want to put on weight, you're going to put on weight. If, if your goal is to drop weight, your goal is to drop weight, do it. So um, we put a lot on them. We say, hey, you're with us one hour of day. What are you doing the other 23? Are you getting enough sleep? Are you getting six meals a day? Are you getting a shake post-workout? All those things are really important and come into play. But in our world, nutrition and technology keep advancing, keep progressing, especially that technology end. And you know what? We're, we're actually hosting a clinic um, January 28th. And we have a couple of speakers coming back, but also Dr. Catarizano will speak. So we collaborate a lot with those guys. Dr. Snyder over there, one of the best exercise science departments in the country. Um, you know, and they, a lot of them were uh, helped come up with the back to play protocol for 
uh, when COVID was going on. And really, anytime you go off campus, there's a protocol that you got to follow that a lot of our professors were a part of coming up with. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, I think our department does a good job of asking them questions in areas that they're the experts and vice versa. Um, so, you know, and we're working on trying to get some technology in the weight room. That's probably like our next piece. Um, that I would like to, you know, velocity-based trading, you know, able to measure the speed on the bar. And you could basically, um, based off the speed the bar is moving, you could adjust the weight, you know, to increase the intensity or decrease the intensity so you could train in a certain zone. Right. When you're training in a certain zone, you're going to have certain types of adaptation occur. So that's kind of the goal with that velocity-based training. So, But as far as weight room, I mean, we got everything we need. Um, and even most of our smaller uh, sports already have GPS, and we're looking to try to progress and get into that area with football too, um, just to start tracking data and you know manage volume of the athletes, um, especially for those skill guys, um, receivers, DBs, and stuff like that. So, you, you like being challenged, don't you? Absolutely, absolutely. We love to we love to get challenged and find ways to get better. If you're not challenged, you can't you can't get better. The other thing that I love is that it's obvious that you're having fun doing what you do. Absolutely. I mean, I mean, if people are watching this and, and they can't sense the energy that you've been talking about, then, then maybe they're the ones that have a problem and need to come and see you uh, on, on. on the side. But you know, uh, the, Come on and see me. <laughs> the, 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 there, there's an old saying, and I don't know how true this is uh, as, as we wrap up, but there's an old saying that if you love your job, you never work a day in your Absolutely. life. Absolutely. Do you subscribe to that? Oh, no doubt. Well, um, you know, for example, this morning and, you know, Coach, Coach Kate's a little under the weather, so um, I kind of helped her with, um, you know, one of her teams. And it's also me getting reps of, of working with a team that I haven't worked with as much um, and get and, and staying sharp on those coaching cues with other sports too. So um, any opportunity to get on the floor and make an athlete better or motivate, um, you know, I told – you know, I told my whole staff, I'm like, hey, I don't want you to just know your sport. I want you to know and have knowledge of other sports and the athletes because, again, that serve, you know, we're here to coach, teach, and serve. So, like, um, you know, are you doing that to the best of your ability every single day? Um, and I challenge my coaches to do that. And I challenge our athletes to adapt to that hard coaching and teaching and learn um, to put it into movement. So, um, never have a bad day and, you know, just always be who you are every single day and good things has happened, you know, so, um, proud to be a paladin, uh, blessed to have a really, really good staff and work with great coaches that, you know, coach Hendricks lets me do my thing and, and I'm super thankful for that. He, he lets me, you know, run it how I want to run it. Um, and he's, completely bought in there's not a day coach Hendricks misses a workout maybe a Friday but he comes in and works out um so he's really bought in and same with a lot of the other coaches on staff they really believe what Caitlin and Novotoski's doing and Aldred and we're just really blessed to have a lot of buy-in from our athletic yeah. department yeah it's interesting because when I do an interview with with coach or want to set something up it, it, it can't be between noon and one because I got to go get my lift in. Yeah, I got to get yeah. my workout in. So, <laughs> yeah. all these years later, he's still following the protocol. It has been good to catch up with you, man. Absolutely. Well, glad to be here and uh, appreciate the time. It's fun. Anytime. Look forward to. We will definitely do it again. Look forward to the next time. All right. That is uh, Andre Bernardi, strength and conditioning coach here at Furman. Hope you have enjoyed this week's edition of Inside Furman Athletics. And as we get set to wrap it up, I will let you know that the next scheduled Ask the AD one of these with Jason Donnelly will be on the 25th of this month. The last Tuesday is when we will record that. Of course, we record them on Tuesday mornings, and they drop uh, early Tuesday afternoon. Look forward to talking to you again next week. For Andre Bernardi and all of us at Furman University, I'm Dan Scott. As always, saying God bless you and so long, everybody.